was the last time you allowed yourself to be a beginner? How did it feel to be completely naive as you stretched your mind and possibly your body to learn a new skill? Did you continue to build on what you, were, what you had learned, your new experience, or was the initial growth intimidating? Were you bold and brave or timid and afraid? Or maybe a mixture of both? The best beginners are children. Children come to this world as beginners at actually everything. Their minds are built for trying, practicing, growing, failing, learning, and relearning. Imagine what it might be like to be a beginner at every single aspect of your life all at once. Children are highly successful at being beginners for many reasons, one of which is that they see problems to be solved with literally new eyes, and they start out thinking outside of the box, because to them, there is no box. For me, I've felt like a beginner for a large part of this last year, with many new and different experiences. I went back to school to complete my bachelor's degree in nursing, and I'm also learning to mountain bike. And I also found that I'm not the best homeschool teacher for my kids. A few other beginner experiences stand out in my mind from the time a year and a half ago when COVID-19 first entered our nation and the small corner of my world where I work as a paramedic in air medical critical care transport. On March 11th, 2020, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic illness with a presence on every continent and in every country of the world. For most of us here in the US, we still felt safe and couldn't imagine anything really changing. We certainly couldn't imagine what the next year might bring or how this pandemic would affect each of us a little differently. I wish that the story was that our medical system was fully prepared and that we knew, the, we knew all the right answers, that logic and foresight pointed the way to all the, right, all the right solutions. I wish that no one died. But that was not the case, as we all know. We were all beginners together at that time. For me, being a beginner then was similar to what some might recall about what it was like to learn to swim or learn to speak a new language or the smooth awkwardness of placing our fingers on piano keys for the first time. In a world where so much has been learned about pathogens and disease processes, it seemed like it should have been easy. But what we thought we knew, we didn't. This was a new virus with new challenges. And while the most brilliant scientific and medical minds we're hard at work, racing to find solutions. Hundreds, thousands, and then millions of people were dying. So let's consider again, what makes children the experts at being successful beginners? They're inquisitive and curious. They ask questions incessantly, so many questions. It seems like their favorite questions are, what's that or why? They ask questions even when asking them makes them look silly or foolish. They don't care what they look like, and they don't care if it's difficult. In moments of the most intense learning, those experiences that are immersive and new, a child might have no previous experience about what they're being taught. Just a rapid fire of brain signals and a new stimuli to make sense of. As beginners with a new problem, a group of my classic air medical coworkers, leaders, and friends began to brainstorm for a solution for how to safely transport critically, kill, critically ill COVID-19 patients to higher levels of care while maintaining the safety of the patient, attending crew members, and anyone who might be encountered from one from the sending hospital to the receiving hospital. As members of this team, a few of us felt a little bit like children as we learned to navigate this new environment full of gloves, masks, full body suits, 
foggy goggles that made it difficult for us to see our patients, and a deadly virus too small to be seen that we wouldn't know if we had adequately protected ourselves against for a minimum of two to five days from each encounter. The stakes were incredibly high, and at times we were very afraid. We were afraid to go to work knowing that it was likely that we might encounter the virus. But at the end of our shifts, most of us were even more afraid to go home, knowing that there was a definite possibility that we might unknowingly bring the virus home to our families and loved ones. The team came up with ideas. Silly ones, good ones. Just like children, we were inquisitive. We asked questions. We asked so many questions and tried to find as much information as we could. We must have changed our tactics a hundred times to adjust to the new information constantly being received about this new virus. It was difficult. It was very challenging. It was stressful. It was not perfect. It looked like this. There were moments when it felt like a visit to the zoo, standing safely behind the glass anxiously observing, but unable to fully interact with our patients. Some patients didn't survive this, but many patients were able to be safely transported to intensive care units where they were able to receive the care that they needed to be able to recover and return home to their family members and their lives. In my view, the start of success was at the point when we allowed ourselves to be beginners when what we thought we knew didn't cloud the reality of what was actually true. Of course, I'm not suggesting that to be successful as beginners, we have to effectively forget all of our experiences. Experience is the basis of learning. But I am suggesting that to find new solutions to our problems, we need to approach them with a fresh mindset where the solutions are not already attached to the problems. Why do we, as adults, avoid being beginners? And how can we, like children, become better at it? Ravi Kumar, a leading mind in work and productivity management, teaches, you have to learn to learn, learn to unlearn, and learn to relearn. Let's explore these ideas a little further. You have to learn to learn. Stuart Firestein, a professor and neuroscientist at Columbia University, teaches his students that the best learning happens as a pursuit of ignorance, using the foundations of what we know to launch our minds into what we don't, into the study of what we don't. In his example as a neuroscientist, he explains that after a full day of meetings with his colleagues, discussing what they know, and what they have learned, he often finds himself after hours with the same colleagues, spending hours into the night discussing ideas, asking questions, considering more and more about neuroscience, the things that they don't understand yet, reveling in the discovery of more and more ignorance. Learning to learn the way a beginner learns means to stand at the border of what we know and what we don't, and continually choosing to take the steps forward into the unknown. That's what beginners do. We need to learn to unlearn the notions that there are certain requirements that must be met in order to be a beginner. New learning is not only reserved for children and young adults. Learning starts in the brain with neurons. Each tiny neuron alone is a complicated machine capable of sensing and transmitting electrical and chemical signals from each of the neurons surrounding it. Within each human individual brain, there are billions and billions of these neurons interconnected in a complex network. When a new impulse triggers through the network, Neurons complete connections 
with each other to interpret the information into thought, sensation, emotion, movement, analysis, and everything in between. The exciting part is that while the most active times for these neural connections to be made is in early childhood, this process, which is called synaptogenesis, continues throughout our lives. And the more and more neural connections are made, the more plastic the brain becomes. Do you see how exciting that is? The more we learn, the more we immerse ourselves in beginner experiences, a neural fire, it sparks a fire of neural sparks in our brains that makes us actually better at learning. Finally, we have to learn to relearn. Eric Hoffer said, in times of drastic change, it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned usually find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. Challenging our old ideas with new thinking leads us forward into progression. Let's take the beginner's mindset to face our challenges. Just like in my example of learning to treat a new virus with fresh thinking and allowing, allowing, allowing the solutions to improve and change as more information was obtained, the more we learn, the more we find that there is still so much more to learn. The process continues. So let's take the beginner's mindset to face our everyday challenges. Let's remember to learn to learn in the best ways and to learn to unlearn the notions that are no longer serving us and to learn to relearn as more information becomes available. This will lead us to better learning and understanding. Thank you for sharing your evening with me to share one final thought from Mest and Kip. A master is just a beginner who kept beginning. Thank you.